you. Dallas police took the really unusual step today of bringing people before the grand jury as part of a murder investigation because they don't believe anyone is telling the truth. 18 year old Troy Causey, a senior at Wilmer Hutchins High School, was beaten to death in March. The people he lived with say he was attacked by strangers. But police don't think so. Fox Force Sean Rabb joins us now with a story you will see only on Fox 4. Well, the problem for police is that all of the people who were in the home that night have been telling the very same story, word for word, detail for detail, and sticking to it. Now, police know people don't see the same thing exactly the same way and certainly don't say it the same way. That's a red flag for them. So since no one will change their story, it's now before a grand jury, and Troy Causey's mother calls it all a cover-up. But today we're dealing with a terrible tragedy. It hurts. We're March 29th, 18-year-old Troy Causey is buried. Six days earlier, he was brutally beaten to death outside the home where he lived with a cousin who played basketball with him at Wilmer Hutchins and others, including a basketball standout at Madison High School. The story was he was attacked by two strangers who ran off through an alley. You don't believe that there was ever any attack by any strangers? Uh, we believe that the uh, individuals responsible for Troy's uh, death uh, were right there present at that time. That's correct. Sources tell us more than an hour passed from the time Causey was attacked until paramedics were called. And that coaches were called or sent text to come to the house. Do you have a manner of death yet? You know, the, the uh, medical examiner has, has ruled, and, and, and a lot of what we've been told uh, is inconsistent with what the, uh, the medical examiner. So it is a murder. Everyone in the home telling police the very same story. They really think they've gotten away, and the cover-up is immense. We reached Troy Causey's mother, who's out of town, by phone. I'm very, very hurt. Very, very hurt. Very betrayed. Uh, the pain is unbearable. So Dallas police subpoenaed the people who were at the house March 23rd to a Dallas County grand jury because they don't feel anyone is telling the whole truth. It seems like the police are using the grand jury in this case as a kind of court of inquiry. What well, is? It Attorney like John Teekle, not involved in the case, says police are trying to get through a grand jury what they haven't been able to get through interviews. They'll advise them like they would any witness that they're under oath and if they, it's determined later that they have lied to the grand jury that they can be and probably will be prosecuted for perjury. It's turning up the heat. It's ramping it up, turning up the heat. Police say if it was just a fight that went bad, their actions would be different. But when you go over a period of weeks and, and you, you're not getting the truth, then um, I think the outcome's going to be different. So here was the scene today, 12 members of the grand jury and the prosecutor, Jennifer Barrett, asking the witnesses questions under oath. The hope is the threat of being hit with a perjury charge will make someone tell the truth. So, Sean, what do police believe about this case? What else do they believe about the case? Yeah, Clarice, they also believe there's cell phone video of the fight and that other people have viewed it. If you've seen that video, they want you to call them. Meantime, cops have subpoenaed cell phones and cell phone records. They have warrants for phones, laptops, tablets, all of that stuff, as well as Internet providers. Well, they're doing a lot of work to get to the truth, Sean. Thank you. Okay. Dis